Hello and welcome to another episode of Beyond the Boundary. Joining us today is Kaisya Knight, a top order batter for West Indies as well as Barbados. Now, welcome to the show, Kaisya. So, first, thank you very much. Welcome again. Thank you so much for joining us. And my first question is: How did you first start playing the sport, and what like inspired you to take it up? Ah, uh, well, my sister and I were the only two girls growing up. Ah, uh, we had. Everyone else were boys. They were entirely boys in the neighborhood. My brother, cousins, everyone was a boy. And my stepfather as well played cricket. We used to go cricket with him on weekends. And even if they were short, we would go and play with the men at six, eight, nine years old with the hard ball, and we weren't scared. So he knew at that point in time that we were going to play cricket for a long time. Right. So, like you said, you obviously have a twin sister, and both of y'all have played a lot of cricket at the highest level. So, how was it growing up with a twin twin sister who was also very good at what the two of y'all were doing? Was there any competitiveness, or was it always very pally and friendly between the two of you? Uh, I was very friendly. Um, we always got to push one another. It was always good to have someone there to train with and. Get some advice or someone to look on and see what you're doing wrong. I don't always have to have, say, a official coach there or whatever. But it was always good to just have someone there that you can sit down and talk to about the game, watch the game with when you're home. And she she's been very good to helping me develop my game, answering or well telling me tough tough things that sometimes you don't want to hear, but you really need to hear them. So having having someone by your side is really important to playing at the highest level. Right. So, like you just mentioned, like sometimes she she was also the one who was telling you the tough things that which otherwise a player would not hear from people close to them. So, do you remember any particular instance where she like said something to you and then that really helped you in your career or in uh, yeah in the cricket that you were playing? Yeah, um, definitely. Um, a lot of times I got starts and did not carry on. And she will always come down hard on me. That you you got past the hardest points. Uh, you need to settle in again and start over fresh and, and try to keep it in it as deep as possible. So those kinds of tough things, some things that you know, even though you you realize them as a player, it's always good to still have someone there to to say to you, and and point out little things to you, as I said earlier. Right. So you played most of your cricket as a top order batter, both for the West Indies as well as for Barbados. But you've also been a really fine wicket keeper, especially for West Indies. You've like done really well as a wicket keeper too. So can you tell me a little bit about how did you take up wicket keeping? Was it like something that you did from the beginning, or was it something that you took up later as a second string to your bow? Uh, second string. Uh, I actually bowled Austin when I first started playing cricket, but one day we did not have anyone to keep, and I just went and keep, and from there I fell in love with it. Um, I definitely love it a lot. I take it very seriously. Um, always watching cricket, especially watching the keepers, um, especially the Australian keepers. For me, just their general movement behind the stumps is something that I really look at. And there are Alyssa Healy, Sarah Taylor, those people I look at to when it was coming up in terms of keeping and stuff. But when you were a kid and growing up, who were like the players that you liked the most or idolized back in Barbados? Uh, Pamela Levine, uh, for sure. She's one that always called and got us out to cricket on the weekends. She played for West Indies and Barbados as well. And I think a lot back then it was a lot of coaches, uh, Richard Clark and. Ezra Mosley and stuff that really got us out and playing the game more and taking it more seriously, helping us with our fitness and stuff. One of the biggest highlights would be winning the 2016 World Cup. You were a part of the 15-member squad for that tournament. So, how big was that achievement, and what were your thoughts when you won the tournament? And how has that win changed things for women's cricketers in the Caribbean? Ah, uh, that that feeling is still on match till this day. Uh, um, having won that tournament and then the guys winning that tournament really put it up there for me. Um, it, it has been good. After that, we have seen a lot more happen for women's cricket in the West Indies. Even though there's still a lot more that can be done, a lot has gone on behind the scenes in terms of having camps and looking to develop younger players. And I think winning that tournament really 
push women's cricket in the Caribbean for the girls that were at home in the Caribbean watching on. They want to experience that that winning feeling, winning a, a global title is always good. And I think that really helped with a lot more young girls wanting to play cricket in the West Indies. True. And now coming to the next big assignment, that is the Commonwealth Games. And this time you would be playing for Barbados. So just wanted to get your thoughts on firstly the pride in representing Barbados, which is your country. And secondly, women's cricket being a part of the Commonwealth Games for the first time. So what are your thoughts on these two things? Uh, it is going to be a very, very good feeling heading up to England next week to represent Barbados. This will be the first time a Commonwealth, this cricket at the Commonwealth, I think is very good for the women's game. We already know that around the world there are a lot of men's tournaments and stuff going on and I really think it's really, really good for the women's game in terms of pushing it. In every country, not only in the West Indies, uh, Australia is well established, but for things like Sri Lanka and stuff, I think that is, is really going to help continue to push the women's game at a very high level. And it's going to create a very good com competition here in the region for the regional tournament. People will want to play at the next Commonwealth Games. So that's an additional um, achievement that teams will definitely be pushing hard and competition will definitely step up when it comes to regional cricket now. I've already represented West Indies and T20Is in England in the past. So what are the learnings that you have about conditions in England and what's the key to doing well as a batter or even as a wicketkeeper in England because it's not one of the easier places to keep wicket in when we talk of world cricket. Yeah, it's going to be a little tough, especially with the conditions. Hopefully we get some good sunny days for us leaving the Caribbean. Don't want it to be too cold because that definitely affects us. Um, well, definitely just just being positive um we know that the ball is going to swing a lot more than when we're at home we have a few days before our first game so i think coach Corey collamore will be looking to start to set some of those guidelines and stuff in terms of how we are going to go about playing our game uh in terms of the keeping definitely going to have to watch the ball a lot longer with the ball swinging around so much uh, but I, I think we have a good group we'll definitely be looking to put on the show and be very competitive and I know that we're going in as the underdog, so I'm really hoping that we can cause a set or two at the Commonwealth Games. What's the kind of role that you've been assigned in this Barbados team? Uh, yeah, I haven't been assigned as yet totally, but i definitely be putting my stuff in the top order. Um, and definitely be wiki keeping for sure, but definitely looking to go at the top for the innings. Right, so what's the position that you personally enjoy batting the most at? Because you've played in so many different positions and done well also in more than one position. What's your personal preference to it? Uh, I, I prefer the top. Uh, I can't play the role of finishing at the end, but I, I enjoy the top a lot more than in the middle of it. You've played a lot under the, under the captaincy of both Stefani and Haley for West Indies and Barbados respectively. So, can you tell me a little bit about the leadership styles of the two of them and how are they similar or different? I, I think it's going to be a lot different. Uh, Seth is the more quiet, reserved captain. She will take on um, your ideas and stuff. She still has her strong points of making her decisions and what she believes is best. Haley, on the other hand, is going to be the fun captain, going to take the job very, very seriously. Uh, she's going to be the fun captain. She's going to be very proactive. Uh, working with Haley for the past couple of years at the bar with the setup and stuff, she she really thinks the game through. She sees when there's an opportunity and she does not second guess herself about it. She really goes after what she believes is going to work. And that does come off more often than not. But even if it doesn't come off, she does not beat herself up or say, I should have done this. We go with a plan and we try our best to execute that plan when we're working with Barbados. And I think I'm very happy for her. And I really hope it's not going to be an easy job as any captain, West Indies, Barbados, male or female. And I just really wish her all the best in her new role. And you were also the second leading run getter in the Super 50. So how, how how's the team shaping up and how have the preparations been? Firstly, and secondly, how happy are you with your own form? Uh, preparations have been very good. Uh, 
happy that CWI got the original tournament off for us to get some cricket. Um, we had a tournament with Trinidad before heading over to the regional tournament, but a lot of our players are out on scholarships in Canada and Haley and a lot of our senior players were out as well. So it was a good opportunity to get some of the young girls in competition. Uh, so I think we're shaping up very well. Training has been good. Kensington over wickets were well prepared, quick firing. So getting us ready for conditions in England somewhat. And I'm happy with where I'm at right now. Um, try not to get too overconfident, just taking it one game at a time, one training session at a time. And really just looking ahead to getting into England and getting used to the conditions there as quickly as possible. So what makes Barbados so successful, especially in the T20 format? Uh, I think we play well, we play well as a team. Um, we believe in one another. And we know that if there are two, three aspects of of the game, batting, bowling, and feeling, and we know if we bat first and it doesn't come off, we believe that the bowlers will pull pull their weight on that day. And when the batters do come off, we know that the bowlers are still gonna do their best and and try to win us the game. So I think we have a, a good mix of youth and experienced players. Um, we have about four to five players that have played for West Indies in the bowling department and as well in the, in the batting department. So the senior players will be very crucial in how we go in England and not not underestimating what the young ones can do, but they, they, they're going to be very important as well because anything can happen on the day of cricket and we're going to need everyone to dive, save, or run here and there, take a catch and a senior player might not always be in the best position to, to get that job done. So we definitely be hoping that everyone pulls their weight once we get to the Commonwealth Games. So I just wanted to ask you, like, how difficult is it to bounce back from setbacks and like, what has kept you going through a career that has sometimes been a little difficult? So if there are young cricketers watching this, what would be your message to them? Uh, it, it is like, it's like um, every day, like everything is not going to be easy. Everything is not going to be straightforward. And athletes we always get a hard time because everyone is watching us everyone is expecting us to do well all the time um but one thing that me and Haley often discuss is just taking it one game at a time uh sometimes you hit that rough patch and you, you know sometimes that rough patch is coming just do your best to get through that rough patch and when you're having a good time make sure and capitalize on that good time and enjoy the cricket as much as possible uh, for me at the worker, it was a really tough time. Came off of South Africa on a high. Was not overconfident about anything, but it just didn't happen for me. And I think I needed to realize, you know what? It's just not happening at this point in time and not get frustrated, not get flustered, not overthink things. Just try to keep it as calm as possible. And I'm happy with where I'm at right now again and hoping that that can continue into the Commonwealth Games. So one of the things that is happening for the first time this year is the women's CPL. You will be representing the Trinbago Knight Riders there. So how? Uh, what are your thoughts about the CPL finally happening for women and uh, about representing Trinbago there, which is a team you've obviously not played for before? Uh, it is very a very good initiative. I think with COVID hitting after we had that initial exhibition games last time in Trinidad, I'm really happy that that uh, CPL is here for us in the Caribbean and I know a lot of teams around the world would love to come over and play in the CPL, come for the beaches, come for the cricket, come for the vibes. I'm very, very happy. Um, this is also another stepping stone for younger players in the Caribbean to, to want to get into. So it's going to cause some more competition, which is very good for women's cricket here in the Caribbean. Uh, playing for Trinidad, very happy about it under the leadership of my good friend, Deandra Dottin. So I have my sister there as well. So I think we have a good a good mix, Anissa Mohammed. We'll be coming with a lot of spinners and stuff in that team, but just excited to get into St. Kitts, start to mix and mingle with everyone in the team. And we're definitely looking forward to the CPL. So what are your personal goals as a batter or as a wicket keeper for the next 12 months? And what are the things that you are targeting in your uh, personal capacity for the next 12 months? Uh, definitely to stay as fit as possible, uh, manage myself as well as possible. A lot of cricket is coming up. Um, 
but definitely looking forward to getting back out there at least on international cricket um pushing those stats is one thing that robert samuels always talks to us about in meetings pushing those stats making those stats better regardless to whatever you're doing is taking more catches helping out the bowlers a little more getting some more runs on their belt just continue to create good habits and in terms of of your own personal development as a player and i think that is what i'm looking forward to most in the next year just developing my game some more and taking it to next level right so you've also been like a part of almost all the major tournaments that west indies have played in the last decade you've played four or five t20 i world cups three odi world cups and west indies has done reasonably well like they made the final of the 2013 world cup the semis this year in t20is they made the semis for four or five editions in a row went on to win the title in 2016 but what are the what are your favorite performances from your time and career with the west indies so far if i like ask you to pick two or three performances of yours that stand out or are the closest to your heart which ones would those be uh definitely um I think just playing in that 2013 final, our first 50 over final, that one was a good one. The way we got to the finals was exciting. Uh, we were all in the hotel just waiting on another team to beat England. <laughs> and I think just making it to the finals for the first time was a very, very good feeling. Um, no one expected us to be in the finals, but I thought that we played some good cricket at times. And that was a, that was a very good one. The 2016 World Cup for sure stands out, and the 2018 in the Caribbean was definitely a highlight. Uh, the vibe, the energy from the fans were just electric. We didn't go to the finals, but I thought that we played some really good cricket as a team in that tournament. Yeah, that's that's as far as the team is concerned, and you answered it really well. But what about your own innings that you are the proudest of for the West Indies over the years? Uh, Innings against so Africa in the 2018 World Cup, we were definitely behind the eight ball, and Shemin Campbell and myself pulled us out of a, a rut, if we call it that. And I think that I definitely enjoyed that because we needed to beat South Africa to kind of secure our place in the semi-finals. And playing at home at Saint Saint Lucia, a big crowd, energy is high, and everyone wants us to win. He really needed to stand up, and I think he did that well. I talk about the other seven teams, which are the teams that you think are the strongest or pose the biggest challenge to the Barbados team. Definitely will be Australia. Uh, we are in the group with Australia, so I think Australia will be definitely the team to beat, uh, defending world champions. Uh, a lot of great players in the team, and Australia never come to ease anyone. They definitely be coming to win. So I think, and I still think that that is a game that we are looking forward to. Uh, the younger players will definitely get an opportunity to play against some of the best in the world when they play Australia. But if you had to like name a youngster or two from the Barbados team who's not played a lot of international cricket or not played any international cricket, but who you would tip to shine at the Commonwealth Games, who would those names be and why? Uh, Aaliyah Williams and Alyssa Scantlebury. Um, Aaliyah can really, I think she's her energy, uh, very good in the field, and um, she's very determined at whatever she does. So uh, she's one that I'm definitely looking forward to. And Alyssa Scantlebury, she's very aggressive, young player. She was on scholarship in England as well. So I'm definitely looking forward to these two enjoying the experience and giving a good show of themselves. 